So, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to import the DEFRA surface water data download in Civil 3D. Now, in case you don't have access to Civil 3D, then don't worry, we are going to show you how to do it with QGIS. QGIS is a geospatial software basically that you can download for free. I'll leave a link in the description below. What we're going to do is follow the same steps import our site boundary, bring in a map basically so we can see the area and then import our data from DEFRA and we're gonna interrogate them so we can get the flood depths and then show you how to PDF it so you can append it in your flood risk assessment report or any other reports you want to. Without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna need is to make sure that we have a DWG of our side boundary and make sure that the CAD file is saved in 2013. Also, you need to make sure that you don't have any title blocks or you have any blocks in it. So basically just run a full purge command twice and you should be good to go. Okay, let's go. Obviously make sure there is no additional layer. So basically all you have is just your polyline. Then what we wanna go ahead and do is go to the DEFRA risk of flooding from surface water data download and we're gonna use the same project we used for the civil 3d tutorial if you haven't watched that video i'll leave a link in the description now the postcode b129 call for park so basically is this park here and we're gonna go to our pen tool so let's switch the camera and we're gonna select the site now it doesn't have to be accurate because basically when we're selecting the side we're basically telling the website hey look we want this tile as you can see here sp08 now in case your site falls between two tiles i presume that the website will download both tiles just click get available tiles now once it's ready uh, the sp08 link will appear so basically if you click on it it will prompt you where to download it we're gonna go to our tutorial folder and let's find it so it's the qgis one and just hit save now it will download the zip file and we don't have to extract it like we did with the civil 3d tutorial because in qgis we can import straight from the zip file now let's go ahead and import our side boundary first we go project import export import layers from dwg dxf we're gonna create a target package so to do that we hit the three dots and then we're just gonna save it on a tutorial file and let's give it a name target package and we're gonna hit save then in the CRS, basically the coordinates, we're going to make sure we select the right ones. The EPSG for UK 27700 OSGB 1936 is not there. Just click the select CRS button and then make sure you filter through and to find it. Now in the source drawings, we're going to import our DWG. So we go to our tutorial folder and we select our side boundary. The reason I said you should have as little information as possible is so the loading time can be quicker. We do not need layer zero and also group name, just type one because it won't matter later on. I'll show you. Hit okay. Now you can see our side boundary came and what all we have to do is in the layers in the bottom left, we're gonna expand the one, expand the side boundary. And what we're gonna do is drag the polyline outside of the group. We're gonna right click and rename our polyline and name it side boundary. Then what we're going to do is we want to add the thickness. So double click on it in symbology. We're going to change it into a simple red line and let's change the width to one. Hit apply. You can see if you're not happy with it, you can always increase the width or change the color depending on your needs. We click OK. Now, the next thing is to make it look pretty. We need to bring some satellite imagery. I found the easiest way to do it is just in the browser and the XYZ tiles. Just double click on open street map and then make sure you're on the right coordinates and hit OK. And you can see Calthor Park came. Now, in the layers, we might need to bring the open street map below the side boundary so we can have the side boundary on top. And now we need to load the zip file that we downloaded. So we go layer, add layer, add vector layer, or control shift V. Now, in the vector, in the vector database, we're gonna hit the three dots. We're gonna select the zip file that we downloaded and hit open. Then we're gonna hit click add and hit select all. Don't rush and click OK because I do not want to bring the model details or the suitability. So hold control, click the model details and suitability. So basically we're unchecking them and then hit OK. And then if we hit close, you will see that many things are loading in the map and you can see and explore everything from the layers. Now, what we're going to do is freeze everything for the time being. Now, you can see we have the depth for 1 in 30, 1 in 100, 1 in 1000, same for the extents. So let's do the 1 in 1000. So let's check it. And that's our map. And now what we want to do is interrogate it. Basically the same thing we did in Civil 3D, only it's slightly easier. We double click on it. 
we go to the symbology in the single symbol we're gonna change it to categorized in the value we're gonna select the depth because that's what we're categorizing in the color ramp we're gonna click the arrow and select blues convenient because we're doing surface water analysis so we're gonna hit classify and you can see it classified these values were extracted from the shape file basically the shape file is a kind of imagine excel table with saying hey this box in this coordinates is that's the value they gave it i want to click on the dark blue one so double click and then click on the color and copy the html notation i'll explain a bit now because this is all other values and in our case we don't have any other values because we have from 0 to 150 150 to 300 300 to 600 690 and 900 to 1.2 and then anything above 1.2 so we can delete it then we're gonna grab the anything over 1.2 drag it all the way to the bottom double click on the color click the color and paste the html notation we copied previously and hit ok now you can see the color grades nicely and we're gonna hit apply you can see that we already can see where we have like low depth medium depth now if we want to see some numbers as well we can go to labels from no label let's change it to single label and then the value again we change it to depth and then we hit apply just to see how our map looks now this might be look too cluttered so i'm gonna bring the size down to let's say 7.5 and hit apply and that looks slightly better and then we're gonna add a little buffer to it so basically an outline to it and hit apply so basically it's just white outline around the text just to make it look better yeah there we go we're gonna hit okay now the beauty of qgis is that we co it can copy the styles i don't know if we can do it in civil 3d uh my limits i have limits in my knowledge but in qgis i know we can do it so we go right click styles copy style all style category and then what we're gonna do is paste it for the one in a hundred so paste styles all style category and then one in 30 so styles paste style all style category now if we untick the one in thousand and we do the one in 100 you can see the style loads same with the one in 30. now after we have created our surface water map essentially what we want to do is pdf it or so we can able to use it and put it in our fra reports to do that we're going to go to the top left there is a button called new print layout or you can hit ctrl p on your keyboard and it will ask us to give it a name let's name it surface and we hit okay now what we're going to do is maximize this one and we're gonna add a map and a legend to do that we're gonna go to the left hand side there is a button add map then we're gonna make sure we snap at the top left hold left click all the way to the bottom for the add legend we're gonna go to the button add legend and we're just gonna left click and it will load it for us and just hit ok the legend you can see imported many stuff that we don't need so to remove them, select the legend, go to item properties at the right hand side. In the legend items, untick the auto update and start removing the stuff you don't need. So we don't need anything all the way down to the one in thousand. I'm just going to click the remove icon, which is the minus, uh, red minus button. Now, also, I don't need the open street map, so I'm going to remove that as well. So now what I want to do is basically expand on this one and just make sure I signify what it is. It's like zero watt. So I'm gonna double click on it and just type M and M just to signify its meters. Then double click on the rest and do the same thing. Now, if we wanna add a frame to it, just in the item properties, scroll further down and tick the frame box. And then you can, there are settings that you can change in the frame. Now we're gonna put it at the bottom right. And then with the arrow keys, you can move it however you wish or you can move it with the mouse i just do the arrow keys so it can be consistent for example three clicks to the left three clicks up so once i'm done you've got two options or you can screenshot it or pdf it to pdf it just go layout and then export as pdf it'll prompt you where to save it we're gonna save it and we're gonna say let's say surface depth one thousand and then we're gonna do always export as vectors because I think this is helpful if you're gonna bring it back to your DWG, like in AutoCAD. So we hit save. Now, if we go to our Explorer and we go to our tutorial file, just to view what has been exported, you can see that we've got now our maps. And the good thing is that if we zoom in, it doesn't blur out, which is great. Now, if you wanna change something, for example, let's say we wanna do a different map. So if we go to the main QGIS map and let's say untick the one in a thousand and we tick the one in a hundred. Now what we can do is go back to our print layout and just hit the region button and it will regenerate automatically. And all we have to do is select your legend because 
the legend is the same for the one in a thousand one in a hundred and one in thirty it's just double click here and then remove the one zero and then export as pdf select this one remove again one zero and then hit save and save again and if we go to the explorer civil text source tutorials and see so you've got the one in 100 as well and then you can append this one in your fra report thank you guys for watching this video i hope you found it useful leave in the comments below what would you like to see next or what could have done better and i'll see you in the next tutorial